<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hey. So that was actually the perfect like introduction with the the talk before us yeah. with the Thank dance you for and that. music. Um, because uh, when we were asked to do this talk, we thought like 10 minutes, that's a long time. Let's, uh, let's introduce a new technique. So that's what we're going to do. Here you go. Yes. As we go. We are going to teach you about a new method. We call it as rego. It's a technique to um, present physical magic and use for control. Yes. So, um, the technique itself, we developed it for our latest lab called Spellbound. And it was a lab designed for last year and run several times. Therefore, through the running of this lab, we found out that it has uh, use for further more than just this specific lab. So, we will talk now a little about the background, the technique itself, and what we think the potential of this technique it has. Yes. So, Spellbound is a lab about Nordic folk, uh, folk culture. It is about that time and these stories we know about being a human that is led into the dark forest and taken by the underground creatures, the magical creatures. Uh, it is also a, a game that is focused about being seduced and seduce someone. It's about being taken and take someone. These are the central themes. And it's also about that we think that um, this is important to focus what it creates these feelings. Uh, yes. So, we set out, we wanted to find some way of how to, to get this feeling uh, of, uh, of being taken and taken away. And, uh, and we wanted a, a physical lab uh, using music and uh, using dance. So, obviously, we started with looking at ballet. Uh, we've done that, like, that's a huge inspiration for us, uh, and also here, uh, because we wanted some of that expression and uh, an immersion set to music, and we wanted something to help people look beautiful, as they do in ballet. And especially, we focused on, uh, on one guy. This is a Viderik, the troll. Uh, perhaps you know him uh, from a, a, a Danish ballet. Uh, and uh, this troll, he, uh, in, in, the, in the ballet, uh, it's, it's about like a lot of people and a lot of I intrigues and stuff like that. That's not so important. But he can, uh, he can use magic to, uh, to control people. So uh, he will, uh, in, the, in the play, sometimes he'll appear on the stage and he will play music. And then all the people, they were just doing all sorts of stu uh, things. They stop and then they move all of them together to the music while he plays. And, uh, and like 40 dancers and it looks awesome. And uh, we were uh, watching this ballet and thought like, Oh, it would be so cool to have like, like have give lapis that experience like of that's magic, you know, uh, much more magical than uh, like uh, pointing a stick and uh, saying a word, and then yeah. you have to do it. Yeah. Then it's just in your mind. We wanted the body into it. So that was uh, one thing. So we wanted like to have people be like Viderik and like the people Viderik controls, and then uh, we also wanted magic. Like we wanted magic that was s sexy and dark and like. Uh, yeah, we wanted a bit of like a, a Dracula uh, feel as well. We wanted to, you know, uh, in the Bram Stoker Dracula thing, we have the scene where Dracula, he, he pulls Lucy out from uh, the bedroom, out into uh, the garden. Uh, and uh, we wanted to give this feeling to people of being like taken away like that. So we had all these ideas and thought about how to do this in a way that people could actually make work. And then we, uh, we looked at more dancing, but especially we looked at uh, Roomba which is a, a, ball, a Latin uh, ballroom dance where uh, like everything uh, happens like in the gaze between the dancers, in the look, and in like one hand that sort of like you lead the other person with one hand. So that's uh, the way Roomba works. And, uh, and you have to signal everything you do this way. So we thought, okay, let's, you know, let's forget about the steps. They take a long time to learn, but let's see if we can, uh, we can get that connection between people because that's awesome to have that, that connection. So that's what this uh, technique is about. So we will try to, uh, to show you. Yeah. yeah, I'll go over here. Yeah, you, you <laughs> yeah. need to be able to switch. So 
this technique, it, it begins with a hand-to-hand -hand contact, like where we find and feel each other. Then we have eye contact, and because we feel the tension between each other, I can make, I can make Maria move. Like, she just has to, you know, keep the contact to the hand. That, that's pretty much how Roomba works. Then there's some steps, but who cares about the steps, really? Like, this is, this is, this is basically Roomba. It, 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 it uses this. And then we thought, like, maybe, maybe we could make this work, like, without hand contact. You know, maybe we could have, like, the same connection. And then we could just, like, you know, move the other person around in the same way. Like, yeah, she just has to f follow me around. Now I have control over her, right? Yeah. And then we, uh, <laughs> we need a way to let, let go, like this, but also to catch again. So eye contact, I raise a hand. Oh, now she knows she's caught, and she has to keep the contact. And keep the contact, keep, like keep, keep away from me, keep away, yeah. And then I could make her come closer and stop her. And now we sort of have like that, uh, the basics of that like Dracula kind of, you know, feeling that I could make her come to me. And and capture her. And uh, that's actually basically how it works. So, uh, but the good thing about it, like, it keeps on working. So, like, you can even, like, uh, find someone, you know, that knows it, and they can, you know. <laughs> See here, like, yeah, there's, like, another human that they wanted to be. Paul then, Harrison, all Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you very much, Harrison. Yeah. And we thought, you know, this might be super difficult to teach people. It's not. It's it's actually quite easy to teach people. And uh, and and we we figured out so from doing this like that uh, it is super easy to learn. It takes like 10 minutes, perhaps 15, 20 minutes if you want to rehearse it a lot. Uh, it's built around like you always have a leader and a follower. And, and the good thing is they become ultra-sensitive to each other. In the game, you, you, you move with a lot of different people. We don't call it dancing, actually, to not scare people off. We just call it like that we move. So don't um, tell anybody. Yeah, don't tell. <laughs> like, that's a secret. Um, but, uh, but even though like, uh, I might uh, dance a bit with Harrison and, uh, and with uh, Marie at other times, I'll have like, a main story with one character. And when we do this for an hour, we'll become very sensitive to each other. We'll know where the other person is. She'll, like, we get this connection from it, from just having to know all the time where the other one is. Uh, we also end up taking very much care of each other, because like, I have to be aware that I don't bump her into things. She I has walk, to know but where I, I walk the backwards. It's his responsibility not to help me into stuff. So. And, uh, and actually, followers, they become easier and easier to control. Like, they'll wheel into this. And you'll also get, so you'll get like this very clear experience of being dominated and being controlled, but in a way that is super safe. Uh, like, the, the, we don't get any closer than this, but we still, like, and at some point during the, la like, when you've done this for some time, like, she'll, she'll just know, you know, like, it'll, it don't take that much to actually, like, regain control, and then again, away. It, it works very nicely for getting that, that feeling. And then we figured out we could make people dance. Like, yeah, because they don't know that that's what they're doing until it's too late. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but we've had like a lot of people afterwards saying, hey, it's amazing. I, I danced for hours and I loved it. Uh, but if, if you told me up front, uh, then I wouldn't have played it because uh, I don't dance. Uh, and it actually feels like magic, uh, both to look upon and to do it. Uh, and yeah, you lose control, but it, but it feels safe to do that. So, we did this, uh, we've done this like six runs now, Spellbound, but uh, really we feel like it could, uh, it could do more than just for that lap, so that's why we wanted to formalize it a bit. Uh, so we know it can give like this physical, mystical, beautiful experience of magic. We know that it can be used to play uh, like uh, these very unequal power relations uh, and uh, even between like, yeah, Maria could control me or could control a person much, you know, much larger than me. And, and yeah. And, and, like, so it works for, uh, for, like, without the physical dimensions in play, we can actually still have this, this domination. Uh, and then we know it works in a black box setting, 
but we're pretty sure that it will work in a vampire setting, like a vampire game or in a fantasy game. Like right now, we're thinking, let's do a fantasy game where the people of the, like the, the elves of the forest or whatever, they can do stuff like that because it feels really magical, like that you can just, you know, take or let your sorcerer, your wizards do magic in this yeah. way and control people. Let yeah. the vampires dominate each other with yeah. it. So take it and use it for that. That would be interesting to see. So that's where we are now. Now we're going to write an article about it, and then we're going to try to make people use it and use it some more ourselves. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. okay. Thank you.